Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer, who was looking to bring as much attention to herself as possible as she seeks to become Joe Biden's running mate since her resume and name recognition are pretty underwhelming, she's extended Michigan's stay-at-home order yet again until June 12th. So we will go over how poorly she has handled such as by sending a mentally ill young man with to a nursing home where he proceeded to beat an old army veteran in the face until he bled. Oh, and by the way, the young man was black and the elderly man was white. Probably didn't hear about that part since it doesn't fit the narrative. But of course, if it were a young white man beating up an elderly black man, it would be immediately classified as a hate crime. There would be statements already from every mainstream figure in politics and media, along with scholarships and education centers in the man's honor. But we already knew that. That aside, we'll also talk about why she's trying to keep the state closed, how that will help the Democrats steal the election, and how she doesn't actually care about the well-being of the people of Michigan. She doesn't even care about me. Very sad. Stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. Just so you know, there are certain words I can't say on YouTube about certain things or else they'll flag the video and we don't want that. So if there's a word bleeped out, that's why. But the first thing I want to talk about is the way a lot of people have been reacting to this on the right. A lot of us have been saying, oh, they're taking our rights away. We're living under tyranny. And I get that. You know, I'm right there with you. Try corn hat and everything. But let's be honest with ourselves. This isn't how they take our rights away. This is all very sudden. It's a very obvious abuse of power by the government. And because of that, it can't last forever. I don't know if I can say why, but you know, you get what I'm saying. Something like this will eventually collapse. And they know that too, which is why if you look at how they actually go about taking rights away from you, it's a very gradual process over the span of many decades because if it's just a little bit at a time, no one notices. And then by the time you do notice, it's too late. It's like the frog in the pan, right? Like if the frog is in the pan, you turn the heat up all the way, he'll jump out. But if you slowly increase the heat, he won't notice until it's too late and then he dies. Same thing here. So uh, on the one hand, I agree with the message. The country needs to be opened back up. We all know that. And we'll keep talking about this, but I would say that we need to focus more on why they're actually doing this, which is that they're trying to steal the election from President Trump. They want to sink the economy. They want mail-in voting. And if they're successful at that, that is when, you know, they're going to get to going about taking your rights away legislatively. That's when you're going to get more gun control. You're going to get laws uh, criminalizing hate speech, whatever that means. And it's not going to be good. Like, do you think it's a coincidence that Michigan is one of the only states still closed? Oh, well, John, you know, Michigan's had a lot of cases well yeah so does florida and so does texas and so does georgia and i'm beg oh please send me an article talking about how all of those states have seen a spike in cases since reopening because first of all you don't know that you just read that somewhere probably from the same people that were wrong about literally every aspect of this virus even politifact called out stacy abrams for saying cases had gone up like 40 percent in georgia because it turns out that it actually decreased by 12 percent moreover there's a lot of reasons that cases could be spiking such as that it's easier to get tested now because we can never actually know how many people have it It's virtually impossible. All we can do is test people and try to extrapolate from there to get a ballpark figure. Turns out we're very bad at that. I even I even got tested. I just went to this drive up place with my insurance card. They took my blood. They me tooed my nose with this cotton swab thing, came back negative for everything. And lest we forget, this is after me and the boys drove 1200 miles to Texas through a bunch of states with tens of thousands of cases. We didn't wear gloves. We didn't wear masks. We all came back. a okay. And you can look at that and you can say, oh, well, you just got lucky. Maybe I did. But the bottom line is that if the state of the country were proportionate to the government's responses to I should have gotten it. I should have gotten it. You're telling me that we're just going to hit the pause button on a four trillion dollar economy and I didn't even get it. Nice job. Nice job, government. What we found out is that 80 percent of people that have died from this have been older than 65. That fatality rate is between three and 11 percent and that the fatality rate for people under 54 years old is less than one percent. And for people under 20, it's virtually non-existent. Now, that's not to say that a one percent fatality rate isn't serious. Of course, it's serious. That's what I've said from the very beginning. Like if you gave me 100 Skittles and one of them was poisonous, like I probably wouldn't eat any of them. Well, at this point, I don't know. It's 50 50. But you get the point. It's like we're not saying that 1% of people dying is okay. What we're saying is that given how low the fatality rate is and given how our hospitals have not been overrun like we thought that they would be and given how lives are being lost due to the despair caused by the shutdowns and people's livelihoods are literally being destroyed, don't you think it might be time to let people live their damn lives? Like if you're afraid of like a sub 1% fatality rate, that's your prerogative. More power to you. But can you like stop ruining it for everyone else? Like, okay, my family needs food. I need to go to work, but I might get a virus that has a less than 1% chance of killing me. And I might not even know that I have it because I won't get any symptoms. Yeah, I'm going to go to work. 
And then you're like, well, but if you don't know that you have it, then you can infect other people. Oh, so they won't know that they have it too? Like this can't go on forever, my friend. I know that you guys want it to. I know that you want to be rocked to sleep in the embracing arms of the state. And I know that you're flirting with martial law to help you with that. But if you're so afraid of getting it, just stay inside. Let the rest of us live our lives. You can stay inside. You don't have to go into the haunted house. That's what this is. You're the, you're the little brat that doesn't want to go into the haunted house because you might get scared. So you're like, well, now none of us get to go in the haunted house. Like, that's dumb. I'm going in the haunted house. The numbers are basically garbage. If anything, they're exaggerated since they're, they're including people that have died with and numbers that should be people that died from So that's that. Let's talk about Gretchen. Gretchen Whitmer. This is a woman who was in the Michigan Congress and went on to run for governor in 2018 against the Republican nominee, former Attorney General Bill Schuette. And so she got lucky, basically. Like, her record was not as impressive as Bill Schuette's, uh, and her name didn't carry as much weight. But what she did have going for her was that the former Republican governor, Rick Snyder, was wearing down his welcome quite effectively. His approval rating towards the end of his term was like 38%. So she had the state's poor perception of Republican leadership going for her. And additionally, she had marijuana going for her. You know, we can talk about the anti Trump momentum uh, causing more Democrats to turn out, but I'd imagine that that was roughly equally countered by the pro-Trump momentum from the Republicans, which is why the 2018 midterm turnout was big enough to rival a presidential election. But really what helped her the most was in 2018, Michigan was voting on the uh, proposition to legalize recreational use of marijuana for people over 21. And studies have shown that marijuana makes the liberals, particularly the young liberals, turn out substantially more to vote. And, you know, if those circumstances did not exist, she would not be in the position that she's in right now. Uh, this is a person who picked a fight with a 77-year-old man from a little town called Owasso, about an hour and a half northwest of Detroit. And this is a guy who works as a barber. He was told that he had to shut down his business. He said, okay. Uh, and then weeks went by. The government gave him a hard time about getting the unemployment aid that he was promised. So then the lockdown kept being extended after that. So finally he said, look, I'm not trying to start any trouble, but I have to eat. So we started working again. Gretchen didn't like that one. Not one bit. She can't have any dissent. She needs to appear strong and powerful because she needs the liberals in this country who are willing and ready to submit to the state to get behind her so that she can continue her thirst for power as Joe Biden's VP pick. And perhaps even the president of the United States once Joe Biden has to step down because his brain is melting soft serve. So imagine what that would be like. Imagine someone as power hungry as Gretchen Whitmer being the president of the United States. And if you dare criticize her, oh, you would be demonized for being a sexist because who are you to criticize the first female president of the United States? Anything she does is empowering to young women. When Gretchen Whitmer harasses an old man in a town with less than 15,000 people by sending state police to his business, she's sending a message to all the little girls that they can do the same thing too. Yeah, real feminist icon, definitely breaking stereotypes by acting like a petty bitch. But yeah, no haircuts in Michigan, which is why we had to go to Texas. But guess what we still have? Oh, guess what was declared to be an essential business. Club Taboo, Alternative Men's Lounge in Lansing. By the way, Alternative Man, I think just means transgender. I went on their website and from what I could ascertain, it's basically a mixture of a gay bathhouse and a nightclub. And basically it's a bunch of gay guys and a bunch of guys that think that they're women and they're just kind of yeah, and this actually, this supports one of the common scientific explanations for why men become transgender, which is just that they are men who are sexually aroused by the idea of being a woman and still having those types of interactions with men. So just keep that in mind. According to their website, they're still open for business. Can you get a haircut? Nope, too up close, too personal, can't risk it. But can you go do questionable activities with strangers at this club? Of course you can, you goof. Why wouldn't you be able to? Also, we had this place in Detroit set up called the TPC Center. That boy was set up to be able to hold a thousand patients. Guess how many ended up being there in the weeks that it was open? 39. 39! Because it turns out that when you have a virus like this, you don't want to contain it. That would be not interesting. You actually want to spread it across the state by signing an executive order that mandates that all nursing homes have to care for patients who aren't sick enough to need a hospital, and then they're also getting paid to take patients in. Why would you want to bring into an environment designed for elderly people who happen to be the most susceptible to it? Probably because you're an idiot, I'd imagine. And it's because of this action, this action that resulted in the virus spreading across the state to a larger degree, that a 20-year-old black man with, a, with the virus and also a history of mental illness was put into a room with an elderly army veteran who he ended up beating in the face until he bled. Why? Apparently the army veteran was on his bed or something, and that's of course, that's what you do in that situation. Memorial Day is right around the corner, you've got a man that made sacrifices for your freedom, and you appreciate it, but laying on what you claim is your bed? That's out of line. And I know that what I'm about to say is the most surface level take imaginable, but we really do have to run this thought experiment every now and then, which is, can you imagine 
what would happen if the races were reversed. Can you imagine the national outrage? I bet that some of you hadn't even heard about this story. Or what about a couple weeks ago when a black man murdered an elderly white couple in a veteran cemetery? Both of them were 86 years old. They were visiting their son's grave and they were shot dead. Why didn't you hear about that one? Because it doesn't fit the narrative. The media is run by progressives and progressives need minorities to think that white people are hateful and racist in order to maintain power. So they run with that narrative like a kite. But when it happens the other way around, not so much. Maybe a short article on the website, best case scenario. Oh, and what was Gretchen Whitmer's attorney general doing instead of, I don't know, looking into this case? She was picking a fight with Trump about wearing a mask. And Gretchen herself, she's been silent. She's too busy promoting herself on MSNBC to actually give a damn about the people of Michigan, who she's harming in her pursuit of absolute power. And that's what this whole thing is about. It's about keeping the economy suppressed, especially in Michigan, which is a state that only went for Trump by about 11,000 votes. And so now they're going to sink the economy, which was Trump's greatest accomplishment, while simultaneously pretending that it's his fault that this is happening. When it's not, obviously we know that. Not only is it not his fault that the virus infected our country, even if it were, it's not the virus that shut down the economy, it's the government. And it's time to end the lockdown. But the problem with ending the lockdown is it makes it harder to advocate for nationwide vote by mail. And if Democrats get nationwide vote by mail, which we all know will be abused and rampant with fraud, along with a down economy, they know that Trump's chances of re-election don't look as good. And that's exactly what this is about. And you might think, well, well, do you really think that they would do that? Yeah, yes, it, yes. The party that advocates for the murder of children up to the moment they're born and even afterwards, do you really think that these people are operating within the same moral framework that we are? They're not. They even talked about how they wanted the economy to collapse just so that it would hurt Trump politically. And now in Michigan, which is a state that Donald Trump flipped and needs to hold on to in 2020, you've got the governor deliberately and unnecessarily prolonging the shutdown, which hurts the Michigan economy and Trump as a result, while also ordering that everyone in Michigan gets to vote by mail, which will also hurt Donald Trump. And why would she want to hurt Trump and the Republicans? Why so badly? Is she just that dedicated to her beliefs? Maybe, but it's more likely it's because she's in talks to become Joe Biden's VP pick, and she wants to prove herself to be an asset to the Democrats by undermining Donald Trump and his presidency in every way that she possibly can, especially in Michigan. This is no longer about flattening the curve. This is no longer about stopping the spread. This is about power, and this is about control. And in Michigan, it serves to benefit one woman in particular, and that woman is Gretchen Whitmer, an incompetent, power-hungry hack who might sneak her way into the Oval Office if we don't put a stop to this. Excuse me. Hello. Um, could I bother you for a second? Excuse me, ma'am. Would you mind hitting the like button and leaving a comment and subscribing and turning on notifications and perhaps sharing the video with a friend? That'd be kind of cool. Why wouldn't you? You're still watching. You're still you're still listening to me talk. But you don't want to you don't want to take the the effort of just click click type. You don't even have to type an actual like like coherent comment. Just put something. We got to boost this in the algorithm because YouTube suppresses it in the algorithm, so we have to counter that, obviously. But thank you so much for watching, and may God bless. Wait a minute, some of you got mad because my Texan accent in the last video was inadequate. That was the whole point. Obviously, it was exaggerated. It's called hyperbole. It's called caricature. Hurt my feelings. Thank you so much for watching, and may God bless America.